Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be doing a makeup and mystery. We are gonna be covering the case of Amanda Knox and Meredith Kircher. Um, it's a very, very long one, and I don't have like all the details. Um, to be completely honest, I think it's really some of it's like really intriguing. So the intriguing parts is what I'm gonna really cover in this video. But if you want a more in-depth deep dive, then please let me know, and I will do that in season two of this series. So, I think that this is a very, very famous case, so I'm sure most people know the details of it. And the fact of the matter is, is that Amanda Knox was an, an American in Italy studying, and Meredith Kircher was British from the UK, and she was also in Italy. And they were, like, roommates, flatmates, whatever you want to call them, and they had two very different personalities, and that, I think, was really focused on throughout the trial. I brought Jackson in. So anyways, um, Meredith Kircher and Amanda Knox were two very different people, and it was really focused on throughout the trials, how different um, personalities they were. You know, Amanda was like very promiscuous, Meredith was more close in is what it was said. So Amanda actually met a man named Raphael while she was away in Italy, and this man ended up becoming her boyfriend at the time. And he apparently looked a lot like Harry Potter, which he actually kind of does. And, um, it said that Amanda Knox was actually, like, a really big fan of Harry Potter. Okay, so, basically, the story goes that Amanda was having some kind of, like, night with Raphael, and she goes home, and she said that... Her front door, I guess, was like unlocked and she didn't think really anything of it. I would think a lot of it, but that is just me. And she went and took a shower and she saw a bloody footprint on the bath mat, which again, she didn't think anything of it. I would think a lot. And I think most normal people would, but we can't really judge her because we really don't know what we would do in those situations. But anyway, she saw the blade footprint, so this isn't a big deal, I went and took a shower. And only when she got out of the shower and she realized that there was... Someone had used her toilet and not flushed, let's just say that, did she start to freak out. And that's when she went searching in her apartment for Meredith, and she found a Mer Meredith had on her bed, on Meredith's bed, and she had been murdered. So Amanda obviously calls the police, and Raphael comes over, which I would not be calling my boyfriend in that situation, but again, you cannot judge somebody for the things that they do. I think I would I would probably, if it was some, my roommate, I would probably have to go to the damn mental hospital because I'd be like, oh my god, what if it was, it could have been, could have been me, what if I'm a target, oh my gosh, paranoia. But again, that's just me, and everybody is different in some situations, I just think everybody is out to get me in some cases. So, the police start their investigation, and they, I think very quickly kind of zoned in on Amanda and Raphael having something to do with the case. I don't know what shimmer I want to use today. I think I'm going to use this silver one today. Because I'm trying out the Dats Taupe palette for the first time. Excuse you, Kai. But they zoomed in pretty, pretty quickly, I think, on Amanda and... Raphael, and they brought them in for questioning. And Amanda actually said it was her boss, Patrick, who did it. But she kind of retracted, and he actually got arrested for it. But she retracted that and said, like, oh no, I only said that because they said I know who I knew who did it, and for some reason it. She said it made up a memory in her head, which. I mean, I, I don't know, I've never experienced something like that, but it's always possible. I mean, anything is possible, and we do have multiple, multiple stories about the police doing stuff like this, so I am inclined to believe Amanda, because we do, multiple police have done this, so it would not be that 
difficult to believe that police in Italy have done it also. So, my products. Patrick is eventually released from prison, like released from jail, because he actually had an alibi. Um, one of his clients was actually able to alibi him at the bar he owned. Because I think I forgot to mention, he was actually Amanda Knox's boss. I can't get any more out of this, so just go in and empties. Which is kind of okay because I was not a fan of this foundation, honestly. And I love using products up so much. But anyways, Patrick was able to get alibied by one of his um Patreons, I guess you could say. And he is released from prison. And the story that Amanda told that it was Patrick actually ends up coming back to bite her in the ass quite a bit because people are like, why did you make that up? So, they find out that they do a search of Raphael's house and they found a knife that kind of like matched the wounds on Meredith. And the police say that they found DNA of Meredith Amanda uh, on the blade and Amanda on the handle and Raphael on the handle. So that is ultimately what ends up getting Amanda and Raphael arrested. However, the defense attorney for Amanda said that she was making dinner and that's how they could have gotten the DNA on the knife. And I think it's important to note that this case was very shoddily held, like handled by the police in Italy. Um, there has been so much talk of cross-contamination, and so it is said that there was, like, there's talk of cross-contamination, which is going to come up later on, but it is said that there was cross-contamination done by the police, um, and that is how Meredith's DNA got on so much stuff. I hate cases like that where, like, the police suck at their job because cases like that I actually feel like will never really be able to be completely solved, although I do think that this case is actually solved, and I'll talk about that. Um, so anyways, they arrest Amanda and Raphael. So they arrest Amanda and Raphael for the murder of Meredith Kircher on the evidence of her blood on the knife. I think I should also mention that um, they had like a vigil for Meredith the, a couple nights after she was found and Amanda wasn't there and people also think that Amanda and Raphael's behavior after the murder where they were like hugging and kissing and all lovey-dovey and stuff like that was really inappropriate and weird and that's also one of the reasons why they got arrested. They had suspicion on them for that. So, I'm gonna fucking throw this shit away also. I've had enough of this. But. So, um. They were under suspicion and they get arrested. And they go to trial. And Amanda Knox is actually painted to be pretty bad. And the. I'm gonna. The nickname that she got was Foxy Noxy, and, like, the media ran with that shit. The theory for the Italian prosecution was that Amanda and Meredith did not get along at all because of Amanda. Uh, Meredith did not agree with Amanda's, like, style, like, you know, like, having sex and stuff like that. Poor marriage. I wonder what she'd think of me if that was true. But, um... So it's said that Meredith didn't agree, they got into fights all the time, and in one of those fights is where Amanda supposedly killed Meredith. So, they get convicted of this, and Amanda gets 26 years in jail, in an Italian jail, because she lied about that story about Patrick. And Raphael gets 25 years. And something weird is that when they arrested Amanda, they gave her an STD test and they told her that she had HIV and she was going to get AIDS. And she had a journal and she wrote in it about like so many different things and mostly about that. 
and the journal actually was leaked to the press and they released it which is really bad really really sad but as it turns out amanda knox does not have hiv or aids they the police in italy literally told her that just to fuck with her which i think is so fucked up and just a testament in this case so They get convicted and they spend three years in prison and that is after them three years is when they finally are able to do an appeal and their appeal gets like they do an appeal and it had been so long that there's actually a different judge in the case there's a different prosecutor and there is different lawyers like it had, they had, it had been completely switched so in the new acquittal trial is actually where The accusations of, um, like, I don't know how to say it, mishandling of evidence, and basically that this, in this acquittal is where, this acquittal trial is where the theory of cross-contamination comes into play, and it's actually, the cross-contamination that first made way in this acquittal is really something that has stuck with every trial after that happened after this one because I think it is a very widely believed theory that the police zeroed in on Amanda and it is entirely possible that the police fabricated the evidence against Amanda. It is entirely possible. So, there is that. And during the acquittal trial, it actually comes back that they they actually acquitted them, and Amanda Knox and Raphael were set free. But the reason that the acquittal actually came was because they had done further testing on Meredith, and they had actually found a fingerprint underneath Meredith's body. I don't know why they didn't test this stuff earlier. So it's kind of like widely believed that this Rudy guy, they think that he actually nowadays, like now people who don't think Amanda did it, they think that Rudy did it, and there's actually people saying that Rudy did it. But when Rudy took the stand, he actually says he didn't do it, but he is in jail for, I think, being at that crime scene, because when the murder happened, he actually was on the way to Germany, and they extradited him and they got him back. But aside from that, um, he was actually really known for being, like, a creep, and he had, like, done breaking and injuries and peeping on people, peeping on women. So, anyways, in the second trial, they get acquitted, and it didn't take very long for the Italian authorities to go back and decide to do a retrial. And Amanda Knox was so terrified of this, she actually decided she was not going to return to Italy during the trial. So she was not there during the trial. I mean, the Italian police were very fucked up to her. Very, very fucked up. Like, they treated her very fucked up. So. And the second... So, third trial begins, and I think that it really was very suspicious for the fact that Amanda didn't actually come home, or come home, co go to Italy during the trial, so I think it was very, but I, I also, I understand why she didn't do it, because she was, they fucked her up. Italy fucked her ass up. 
but so I understand why she didn't go home or go back to Italy for the trial. But third trial happens, and they are found guilty of Meredith Kircher's murder again. However, another acquittal happened, and the way I understand this acquittal is that this was going to be the final trial. It was either they were guilty or they were innocent. Because, I mean, like, people were so tired of this. Like, you know, they found guilty, then they got acquitted, and they found not guilty, and then they got, went back to court and were found guilty again. And, like, people were just really tired of it. I mean, because Meredith Kircher's murder actually gets really lost in this case. Like, there is a person who did lose their lives. That is something that is very important to know because it gets, it really does get lost in this case that Meredith Kircher lost her life. So, the final verdict is that Amanda Knox and Raphael are not guilty and they cannot be tried for this murder again. And this murder. This case was, like, so, so big for, um, just the fact that, like, it was an American in Italy, and really, Amanda Knox really was the star. Like, they didn't, nobody really focused on Meredith Kircher. And Meredith's family actually has publicly stated, like, they just want to move past this and I kind of feel so bad that they've had to go through four trials honestly like they like it's so bad I do think Rudy is guilty of it and I think he had accomplices because there was actually two other unknown DNAs found on Meredith's or yeah on Meredith's body so I actually think that there were accomplices and I think that Rudy is one of those accomplices So I don't think everybody that's guilty in Meredith's murder is arrested. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell. All social media, great stuff. Really helps this channel out. We'll see you in tomorrow's video. Bye, guys.